Mushroom 11 made by Z on PC. Alright, thank you and welcome everybody. This is Mushroom 11, I'm Z and I'm very glad that I can show this game or the speedrun of the game to you today. Um, I've got a question to the host. What time do we have locally right now? Uh, it's 11.36 right now. 11.36, like Mushroom 11.36? Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and now, without further ado, let's dig right into the speedrun. Are you ready, timer? Three, two, one, go. Here we go. Mushroom 11, everybody. We control this weird blob of fungus mass, this green blob. Actually, we don't control it, but we control this weird yellow, not, not yellow, white circle, which is an eraser. So the mechanic of the game works as this. You are this blob of fungal mass, and you have to erase parts of you to let them regrow somewhere else to move forward. So, um, basically, this game is about destruction and rebirth of your own character. This idea is because the game was, uh, the idea for the game was conceived in 2012 at the Global Game Jam, where the um, theme of the Global Game Jam was a picture of the Ouroboros, which is the snake eating its own tail, and that is a symbol for uh, the end being a new beginning. So the team, whoops, the team did in the, in the um, Game Jam, yeah, decided to make a, uh, like a sort of movement mechanic out of that. So we are, uh, we have to constantly destroy ourselves and regrow back. Uh, the regrowth mechanic works in a way that uh, there is like a probability where it is um, more likely to regrow. So uh, the cells will regrow more likely at the opposite side of your eraser, obviously. And um, if you have more parts than one of the fungus, because you can um, split yourself up, which we will have to do um, very soon in this level, um, then uh, it will also try to regrow both of the parts. Uh, sometimes this can be annoying if you just want to have one part left and you try to regrow uh, that one and you didn't see uh, that you had actually another part somewhere else and then that other part regrows um, and you accidentally erase the other, the one that you try to keep alive. And that is what I call in this run fungus management because you constantly have to manage all of your fungal mass where you have it and where you want to regrow it. And the theme of the game is, as you see, we are living in kind of a post-apocalyptic world where mankind has already uh, eradicated and destroyed, apparently itself, or maybe not, I uh, don't want to spoil anything. And uh, yeah, we have to go through this world where um, strange mutated creatures live, and everything we touch, we absorb the DNA of it. Contrary to popular belief, this doesn't make us grow, it is just there for the 100% uh, completion. Um, so... Uh, uh, we don't have to collect anything actually, it doesn't, doesn't benefit us at all. So this is the boss of the first stage. It is uh, like a, a larger creature of the, of the plants that we encountered earlier in the, in, the, in the level. Each stage ends with a boss and we will not have to defeat all of them, but uh, this one we have to and, and in order to progress. So there we go. And uh, that was chapter one. Chapter two is another eradicated city. Oops. I love it when that happens. So in case if you're noticing the music, which is quite groovy and catchy, uh, the music is not composed for this game, but it's rather licensed. It is made by an um, avant-garde electronic music band uh, from England called The Future Sound of London, and they license the music from that band to um, fit with the game. And I think the soundtrack uh, is totally um, fitting the mood and the tone of the game, which is the uh, rather dark, uh, uh, post-apocalyptic... Um, and uh, weird. So we are seeing some new ob obstacles in this game, which is like there was uh, lava. If I fall in that, I obviously die. These are spiders. If they uh, shoot me, um, I will get infected, like an infected mushroom, <laughs> and um, start to um, erase myself until I, I uh, delete my my infected cell. So that was a skip right there. You were actually supposed to um, climb up that uh, pipe and fall down on the seesaw from above, but it's faster to just do that. Yeah, and this um, purple liquid has the same purpose as the shoot of the spiders. If I touch it, I um, I get killed. 
as soon as I, uh, um, I get infected. Now, in order to open this gate, I have to touch all the three lights at the same time. And this is an, a mechanic introduced at this very scene. We're gonna see it a further, uh, few more times in the run. Here you see the shoot of the spider. If, they, if it touches me, the fungus uh, slowly gets eradicated until I erase my infected cells. go yeah. so oops so we are racing uh, running any percent today in case you haven't noticed the other category in this game is also a hundred percent which requires you to collect every piece of DNA in a level um, there is actually even more to collect in level there are cleverly hidden strands uh, that you can try and reach but they are so awkwardly hard to get that um, uh, we've decided or it was decided uh, that the uh, that they those are not needed in the 100% uh, completion category. So here's another of those gates. Um, there we go. Now we're going to the boss too. And um, this is one that you can actually skip, which I will uh, go for. It's a giant spider. Uh, nobody likes spiders. Ah, uh, that's not good. Ah! ah, dang it. That was very, very close. Uh, I could have made that. Um, let's do it. Try it again a few times. Way too slow. Building up momentum in this game is a bit fiddly because you really have to manage all of your fungus. Uh, there we go. <laughs> right, stage three is like a abandoned uh, here in the background, abandoned amusement park and uh, fields of of corn, of genetically <laughs> mutated corn or something. Um, we're getting the mechanic of water. So, oh, I forgot to tell this. Um, you only regrow cells as long as you touch the wall or the ceiling or as long as you are in water. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, in, in midair, you're not able to regrow. And that is one of the few times that you can actually e completely erase yourself. So it is not possible to erase yourself when you're touching on ground and, and hovering the eraser over yourself. Uh, however, uh, if you're just one single segment left in midair and you mash the erase button on top of you of the fungus, um, you will erase yourself completely. Sometimes that is handy if you just want to reset to a checkpoint without going to the menu uh, because you messed something up in midair. All right, so now do you want to build a shroom ramp? Uh huh. That doesn't. Uh, this could work. Don't kill me. Thank you. In this uh, fun fact, in this level, um, I actually. I have taken a look at the iOS uh, mobile version of this game recently. Um, it is actually quite different and as a speed game I think it's even easier because it has um, uh, alternated physics and multi-touch controls so you can have multiple erasers. And I casually got the IL world record during my uh, hosting shift yesterday and that's another skip by the way. Uh, you would ha usually have to um, uh, travel across on these platforms one cycle and that saves uh, two platform cycles if you get it. So let's get down these gates. The following part has one of the biggest enemies of the game, which is the game's camera. Um, game's camera usually tries to help you and uh, focus, that was good, focus on the largest part of the fungus that survives. However, sometimes and the camera tries to help you in a way that you don't want it to help you. And um, that was also a nice skip right there. Um, and if you um, it, if a part of the fungus, the the, the smaller part, is uh, touching the, the edge of the screen, it gets erased. So sometimes you want to have a piece of the fungus survive, but it will be at the edge of the screen because the camera tried to uh, help you, but in fact didn't help you, so um, yeah, you screwed. Here I am actually supposed to push the, the stone down, but I'm not going to do this. I'm instead going to do that, and it's a bit faster. And to climb up these weird shaped... Uh, uh, t uh, tentacle. So you will notice that the stages are quite short, but uh, that will change soon. Um, especially the final stage of the game is uh, the final chapter. Is oh, that's not good. Let's erase myself. Uh, is a lot longer than the others. So there's a quick kill for that boss. Um, uh, please, thank you. All right, which I. Here we go. Usually you're supposed to like. Um, to to um, project its um, uh, bombs back at it, and um, 
and uh, de defeat all of the little uh, little eggs or the cells which it has on the on its side. Dude, this is an IL world record right there. <laughs> what the funk? So no more iOS IL world record in this uh, in this stage. Nice. All right. Uh, this chapter is like a um, abandoned factory. Oh, I got a bad cycle, which nobody's to blame but myself right here. Uh, yeah, wasted a bit of time, but who doesn't like wasting time? So if if the host has anything to say right now, um, please go ahead. I think I don't have much to comment right now. Of course. We have a ten dollar donation from Tortoise Lady saying Mushroom Eleven is an awesome game and Zet is an awesome runner. You got this. <laughs> Thank you. It's like the <laughs> green mushroom like a green turtle. So on this stage, uh, lots of, of uh, machinery is trying to um, trying to uh, uh, hold you up and uh, stop you from progressing. But as we're trying to get be fast in this stage, um, we're not letting ourselves get uh, stopped from uh, from any of these, you know, gears and conveyor belts and stuff like that. Um, there is another gate right there that you have to open by turning this uh, screw. This is a bit um, fiddly and uh, requires patience. And everybody knows patience in a speedrun is one of the least things that you're uh, that you're gonna have. And of course, it also requires good fungus management. Let's try this, alright, good. We're supposed to use the hook here, but we don't need that, so we just... Uh, yeah, this is another one of those gates where I have to touch all the lights. And I did it. Now let's progress. This part here can be tricky to do quick, um, because you have to uh, look out that these, um, these gears don't turn too much by accident. There we go. Now let's get through here. Oh, got, got it. Uh, this here is a skip that I found. Um, it saves a bit of time, but it's extremely hard to do. Uh, I will go for it anyway. And I just got it. Um, so you're actually supposed to uh, just to make the gears uh, beyond you uh, stuck, and then the um, the grinder on top is is not not hurting you anymore. So, but we don't need that if we're just gonna far gonna go fast. Not sure if I make it. Good. All right. The next boss, ladies and gentlemen, is a giant shrimp uh, in a uh, kind of weird robotic machine. I don't really know what the designers thought when they made this thing. Um, and it's shooting us with missiles. So I've been looking for a skip in for this boss, but uh, that would would require you to um, have the the claw swing to the right side and, and stick to the ceiling, get across. But I have yet not gotten the the right amount of momentum out of it. So what we have to do to defeat this boss is we have to def um, destroy its uh, missile firing um, of, uh, projectiles and then absorb the shrimp inside or whatever the beast is supposed to be. It's easier to do that from the top here, he said and failed. So we have to destroy enough of them to get a gap that we can fit across and absorb the boss. So now we have a gap, but now I just need a good moment to... Um... Nah, I just killed myself. Nice. It's okay. We can do this. Yeah, you're actually supposed to like hide in these little gaps on the floor, but most of the time you don't need that, you can just uh, 
Squeeze yourself across. Oh. Awful RNG right there. Thank you. Yeah, as you see, we've destroyed enough from the from the outer shell of that of that machinery. So now we should be able to fit through. Nah. Bleh. No, there we don't go. Nice explosion. There we go. Took some time, but. We're stealing the, the machinery now and to get across the ending of the stage. All right. 30 seconds off IL. Next level is a volcano level uh, where you have weird pods in the background with leaking green goo. So I don't know if this game was inspired by the movie The Blob. Um, this game also introduces, uh, or doesn't introduce, but it, it copies a mechanic popular for many 2D platformers. But I will get to that later. Oh, by the way, if you've noticed that all the levels are going from right to left, that is obviously a design choice because uh, the mouse is usually at the right hand side of the keyboard so it feels more natural to move the mouse from right to left because uh, movements towards your body always feel more natural than movements away from your body in case you haven't noticed that as a musician you might know that and I died yeah rails that's a good point I just touched an ele electric rail electricity kills the whole part of the fungus that um, uh, that touches it. So if you have the fungus like uh, split in, in two or, or multiple parts, then only the parts which touch the electricity source will get killed. Otherwise, the well, if, if you're just one part, the whole fungus is getting killed. Now, here is one thing that the devs thought every 2D platformer needs. A rail section! So here we go. Oh, these things, in case you haven't noticed yet, I forgot to explain. These are checkpoints, and uh, obviously once all of every segment of your fungus gets eradicated, you get respawned right there. But I think you've figured that out on your own by now. This stage is quite the relaxing music, I think, in the background. Shoutouts to Future Sound of London. Oh, that doesn't look too good. Uh, nice save. <laughs> yeah. So I do believe that the developer Untamed Games actually did an amazing job of uh, conveying the theme of the Game Jam, uh, Global Game Jam 2012. So yeah, the, the, the idea for the game was conceived in 2012. However, the game was released in 2015, so they quite worked a lot and polished it. It was released on uh, October 15th, 2015, which is National Mushroom Day in the US. I didn't even know that this day exists, but apparently it does. So it's a perfect release date for the game. And um, yeah, so as I said, Ouroboros is the theme for the game. And Destruction Rebirth, it's also, it's, it's kind of um, uh, telling in the, in the overall uh, narrative design of the game. Because you see, you're in like a, a that's not good. Ah, bad. You're in a post-apocalyptic world, and uh, so mankind has destroyed itself. Uh, however, there is other bio, bio, uh, other life forms are um, emerging. So it's like a destruction of rebirth and rebirth of the planet Earth, as well as a theme. So that's actually quite cool that they went so meta with the with the whole theme that it's from the control mechanic over to the um, overall lore of the game. So we're using this steam to get up here, but I'm also sticking to the wall a bit. That's gonna help me out. Here I'm using the fire breathing worm. No, that's not good. It's okay. Let's get up here and let's eat this little bugger. Yeah, so anything that the mushroom touches, it likes to consume. There is a... Uh, every organic mass is um, getting absorbed. That's bad. That's one of the worst um, puzzles in this game, but I don't think I can save it, no. Because there is literally no way in doing it fast. Um, 
maybe try like this. Should there we go. Now I have to wait an awful lot of time until my segments fall down, because if I erase myself now, I'm gonna respawn and the door is closed again. This can get quite annoying here. Um, oh wow, that was very close. Yeah, these are one of the, the grinders. I think you've already seen them. If you if you get in them, you get like uh, destroyed and, and uh, pushed out again in little little segments of the fungus. All right, now let's get up another platform. That's actually enough already. Cool. If there's anything else you want to say right now uh, to the host, then um, feel free. I don't have much to say. Well, while we don't have any donations, I'd like to talk to you about one of our partners, that is Chrono.gg, that is uh, selling awesome games for not much at all. Like, for uh, for example, today we have the Darksiders franchise pack <laughs> for $5 only. And a large amount of what uh, of the buys that will be done on site will be donated to Save the Children. So, you know, you'll get games and it's for a good cause too. Yeah, absolutely right. We're raising funds for Save the Children, so everybody, these are a very, very good way to spend your, uh, your cash. Uh, they are helping children all around the world. Um, so if, you, if, if we suddenly live in a post-apocalyptic world like this uh, and there's still children around to save, then... Uh, to, to help them not getting eaten by a, by a big fungus, uh, you wanna you wanna um, donate funds to save the children. Yeah, this level is like in a volcano or in a mining facility, uh, so we don't wanna wanna land in the lava right there. And with fire breathing worms, uh, blah, 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 blah. no. Okay, I'll try. You have to um, manage your. Uh, the amount of, of cells that you have on each of the platform that you can... Like this. Alright, now the minecart section. Oh no. Oh no. Good. Alright, good. So if I'm getting it... Nah, that wasn't good. At least I didn't kill myself. If you get enough momentum, you can get right across in this, uh, this lever up there. Uh, directly from the momentum that you get after the ramp. Didn't get it, unfortunately, but um, it's all right. So, next boss. This is one of the bosses that we don't have to kill entirely. However, we have to kill pretty much most of it anyway. Nah. Okay. Try to not get in the fire. Try to eat that one as well. Good. Okay, now I have all of the parts erased that I have to erase, and now I can use the body of the boss to climb up if I, I think I'm dead. No, I'm not. Okay. Wait a bit. Here we go. So now I do not want. No, that was. Ah, damn it. That's what I did not want to do, but um, it's okay. We just lost a few seconds. This is actually the longest stage of the game. Just 10 seconds of my personal best, that's good. Um, uh, usually I always thought that this stage was longer than the previous one, but that one is actually shorter. But that one has one, the, the most ridiculous boss. Oh, already. That's a good start for this stage. I was afraid of that stage the whole time. But uh, let's, let's don't be afraid, let's just do the stage, okay? So when you're in like kind of a, a science facility slash a hospital, I don't quite know what it's supposed to be but something along those lines maybe they were looking for a cure for something last minute uh, here's a, a skip up, um, a possible skip upcoming that I'm gonna attempt to do but I don't have the rotation that I need oh dear oh dear oh dear oh dear oh dear yes there we go nice that is good, pretty good um, usually you're supposed to fall down there thank you very much usually you're supposed to fall down there and climb up the wall 
But um, this is one of the scenes where the where the um, regrowth algorithm helps you a bit because if you stick to that very part of the wall, it uh, prefers regrowth of that part that is sticking to that wall, so um, over other parts of the fungus. Um, so you can abuse that and uh, actually, yeah, just make it across in one swing. Uh, I don't have enough rotation right now. All right. Electricity, as you remember, as soon as I touch electricity with a part of the fungus, every part of that electricity... Nah, don't want to risk anything. Every part of the fungus that touches it gets uh, erased, so we want to be extra careful here. Doesn't stop us from going for a skip right there. So this puzzle is a bit annoying, oh yeah. Uh, because you have to do really good fungus management right there. Um, I need to get more growth at the right hand piece. Okay, I think I can do it. Bum, bum. Not good. Yeah, just... That can happen. Casually, <laughs> yeah, casually this puzzle is really an, uh, a pain to, to solve. So now I have to make use of the electricity killing me. There we go, to activate that switch. Get across and there's a seesaw coming up where I can just uh, get across. There we go. Here we have the, the purple goo again in case you forgot. As soon as the purple goo touches me, the, the fungus begins to eradicate itself until I... Uh, um, erase its infected cells. This hook here has killed runs for me. But we got across fairly easily. Alright. More hooks to... And now we are finding rockets. These are one of the most annoying things in the whole game because they are incredibly hard to control. Um, yeah, as you have, might have noticed, this is a, like a puzzle platformer game and uh, the physics of the game play a huge role. And same goes for these missiles, so you really have to, um, uh, have to le oh, dang it, have to learn how to, how to control them. And uh, in case uh, I make this game look easy to control for you, it will take a long time until you until you feel comfortable controlling the game um, because at the beginning it's it's really weird and awkward to um, to to get everything like you want it. But uh, yeah, if you run a game, you dedicate yourself to um, to getting good at the controls. I'm attempting a skip here one time, which is if uh, that doesn't look good. Now nah, I'm not gonna get it. Right, you can you can make it in one go. I will just do the the casual uh, way. It's not not a big deal. Yeah, and there this red light is exactly the same as the uh, as the purple goo. As soon as you touch it, the fungus gets eradicated um, cell by cell unless you erase the infected cells. And um, that is actually uh, an important point for the um, for the boss of this stage, uh, which is uh, by far the hardest obstacle in the whole game. Um, oh, and uh, another fun fact: I um, yesterday in practice, I uh, uh, I accidentally beat the I elbowed record for this for the stage by over a minute. So cool. <laughs> yeah, and we are approaching the boss very soon. I'm actually afraid of it, not because it looks scary, but because it's uh, it can troll you very hard. But we're not gonna we're not gonna bother with that. Just all right. Here we go. This boss, this fire, these uh, projectiles, these um, glowing, glowing pink or whatever color that is, uh, pink projectiles, and those function the same way as the as the red light. So as soon as it touches you, uh, it starts um, eradicating your fungus until you erase the um, until you do erase the um, the infected cells. It. There is, you can actually skip that boss, I just attempted that, by flying with the rocket above it, but it's incredibly hard to control, to keep the control of the rocket, of the fungus, and um, dodge all of the projectiles which are completely deadly and will mess up your, um, 
your movement and everything. But let's hope that we will get across rather uh, soonish. Yeah, and as you see, the the boss is like um, absorbing the, the the purple goo to refill its ammo and shoot more of the the annoying deadly projectiles it does. Mm, there we go. That's it. That's the next hit. See this? Nice. Okay. Got it. That one went a lot better than it, than I feared it could, but it could have gone a lot better as well. So this boss is just annoying, and we do not talk about it. Unfortunately, there's not many people running this game, as with uh, previously mentioned with many many PC games. Um, it also will destroy your wrist if you don't uh, don't take care of your hand, like every mouse-controlled game. But um, I have actually. I do not use the mouse buttons to press and hold the um, the eraser. That has a reason because uh, it is um, if you if you hold down the mouse buttons, you put strain on your fingers and on your strings in your arm. And if you then move the mouse around with the pressed uh, mouse button, um, uh, that actually hurts your arm way more than just moving the mouse without holding a button. So that's why I'm using using my left hand to the eraser uh, for the eraser keys. And um, don't uh, press the mouse button at all. Just a uh, general advice if you want to uh, run this game, how to keep your hand safe. Because um, speedrunning is fun, everybody, but you don't want to look down on your health. Your health is even more important than speedrunning. No. That's bad. Uh, this is the final stage, stage 7, by the way. Um, it is by far the longest and the hardest. Uh, however, it also has most skips. So when I casually arrived in this stage, I, I, I think I took like two hours just for that stage alone, and I lost my motivation multiple times. So if you if you want to play this game casually, don't lose your motivation. It's actually worth it to to beating it, but you have to be very um, careful about your physics and all of your um, manage all of your uh, you know. Uh, um, uh, skips and stuff. Here is a skip that I'm gonna you know, attempt and didn't get. So actually you're supposed to get this ball of dried grass down there in the spikes, but we don't want to do this because we are speedrunners. Alright, there we go. This air is trying to blow me away, but I don't want to. Bro, thank you. It's also a minor skip that you can do, um, there we go, you're actually supposed to cling up there to the ceiling and fall down with more momentum, but if you just uh, regrow along the wall, you can regrow fast enough to um, not get caught by the spikes. Ah, that was awful. Unfortunate. But it's okay, I think, I think we should be well with an estimate. So, um, just to know how inactive the community for this game is, uh, I want to give you a, a perspective. When I submitted this game, I had barely um, started to run it. I just had um, played it on the 12-hour challenge. Actually, the 12-hour challenge is the upcoming weekend, if you're interested to learn a game in 12 hours. Uh, here's another skip. There we go. Um, and also, we're going to skip this one as well, because we don't need it to build up the momentum. And that camera just uh, screwed with that, but, but I think we should be good. Yeah, we, we're very good. Um, yeah, the 12-hour challenge this weekend, I learned that game during a 12-hour challenge, and then submitted it to ESA, and while I prepared for ESA with that game, I actually got world record, so um, this is how inactive the community for this game is. If you want to have a good physics platformer speed game, do it. This is also a skip that I'm attempting here. You're supposed to... Um, cut yourself in half, put the put more mass to the right side of the seesaw, and then, there we go, and then um, uh, use the physics to proceed. However, I just put a very, very small amount um, of my of my fungus to the left-hand side, and then the, the seesaw will not get triggered enough to um, let me fall down. Uh, oh dear, 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 o
that goes, RNG can, <laughs> thank you for all the applause. Uh, this RNG can screw you over here if you're at a bad cycle arriving at that spot. Uh, no! Alright, good. Yeah, you have to really be careful about all your, all your fungus pieces, because if you accidentally have, as I mentioned at the beginning, accidentally have a piece of fungus remaining that you didn't, didn't, don't realize you have, then uh, you might happen to erase all of the fungus that you're trying to keep alive. Uh, whoops, alright. Oh, and this uh, is pot boiling water, by the way. If you touch that, um, a lot of your fungus mass is getting erased at the same time. And by the way, the mechanic that I'm um, I'm using most of the time here, uh, the, I don't think that the community has a has a name for it, but I'm just calling it speed growth, where you um, get yourself really small and, and regrow in a really rapid uh, manner, like just now. Um, that was actually a mechanic that the developers weren't aware that it was put in the game, so they saw it first when they demoed the game at, um, at a... Uh, at uh, uh, an, an event and um, saw that people, when they challenged people to to play the game fast, and they saw that oh, nice, they saw that the people um, used that and they were pleasantly surprised that they found a new mechanic that they weren't aware that they had this in the game. Whoops. All right, let's grow. Okay, cool. That is what I like to call the Wheel of Fortune. It is um, a rather boring part, so if there's anything to say from the announcer side, go ahead. We actually have a few donations. Yeah, go ahead. You can read them right now. It's a good time. All right. We got uh, $10 from Franz Cook saying, Yo, we love to listen to your voice, Zed. By the way, did you finish your Bachelor speedrun? <laughs> Wish you the best of luck for everything. M and F. We also have five dollars from Harry Carlson, saying this run of Mushroom Eleven looks absolutely mesmerizing. I love it. Also, it gives me existential dread. Thank you for all the donation. And uh, yes, I'm on the verge of finishing my bachelor's speed. Don't worry. All right. Um, apologize for the. Uh, Loot content coming up very soon. If I could like get up here, thank you. You can abuse the water for um, getting boosts. Uh, I don't think I have properly explained that. If you if you use the the mass uh, accordingly, ooh, um, you can yeah fall in the water and get a quite a huge boost upwards. All right, there is another minor skip coming up. You're actually supposed to use that uh, leaf ball again, but this one is actually, yes, this is pretty free, so we don't use that. <laughs> and here's also a, a mechanic that I found that I'm, I hope I can pull it off because it, it's pretty cool. Uh, um, There we go. Yeah, you're actually supposed to like uh, get half of your fungus on one side and half on the other side and then have both of the cannons shoot at the same time and meet you in the middle. It's ridiculous, but I uh, found that way it was easier. This is a gate made of bamboo and it likes to bamboozle me all of the time, so I call it the bamboozle gate. I have lost runs to this and I hope that it won't take too long for me to activate it in this run. But if I do, then... Uh, that looked good already, but not good enough. There we go. Yeah, that one can get really... Now, this next obstacle is ridiculously hard to do casually, so I uh, invented a skip for it, which I hope... Uh, nah, first try, nice, <laughs> okay. I call it the bamboozle wheel skip, because this wheel also bamboozles me all the time, and it's made of bamboo. Um, wow, that's a good cycle right there. Right, you can make it up there in one cycle. I unfortunately missed that, but it's okay. We checked uh, the checkpoint, so we're good to go further. <laughs> the 
Okay, don't die here. Need a bit of patience. I know patience in a speed game is rare, but sometimes you have to have to have it. Now these are the, the grinder cannons again. To do a certain rhythm for it to uh, open the gate for you. Oh dear, that's that's unfortunate. But it's okay, we can just do it again. Here we go, this should, this should work. I hope. There we go, yeah. All right, so we're actually... Ah oh no, we're not approaching the end of the level quite yet, but... Slowly, slowly approaching it. You might have noticed here's like a lot of these um, uh, piranha plants, or what you might call them. Um, it's interesting that the design of the game has um, all of the bosses. Excuse me, all of the bosses appear as kind of uh, smaller enemies in the game beforehand. So um, the boss of this stage is is modeled after these plants. You can make that. I actually found that skip uh, just during that marathon here. Yeah, so that was the final obstacle of this stage and now we're approaching the boss. I hope everybody of you remembers uh, their sessions of playing Snake. Because that is pretty much what we're going to do. We want to feed this to grow large. Uh, it has a de deadly breath, um, which I try to not eradicate all of my body parts because it's... How did that not feed it? So yeah, I think I think you see what we kind of what we're going for here. Um, it's basically like a mix between snake, and you might remember that uh, the game's theme is Ouroboros, or was the the game jam's theme was Ouroboros, the snake eating its own tail. So uh, hint, hint, hint. Oh, come on, that's really unfortunate. I'm an extremely good pace, by the way. I am not quite sure how I deserve that. Nice, and I. <laughs> Completely mess up everything at the boss. It's okay. That's a speedrun marathon or uh, life. Uh, it can happen. Okay. All right. Let's let's do this. Don't kill me. Ah. Uh, how often did he kill me already? I think like four times, five, six. No more. I think. It's alright. We're still we're still way underestimate. If I if I um, see that comp correctly. Almost there. So yeah. A robber is everybody. Oh, nice clip. <laughs> hasn't happened before. <laughs> really, hasn't. I know that you can, under certain conditions, uh, clip through the wall, but um, I didn't know that you could do that. Uh, this is actually pretty... Yeah, there's another I elbowed record. Dude, what's going on? <laughs> um, the epilogue. This is the, the final part of the game. Um, apologize for further lewdness. Uh, where um, something of the lore of the game is revealed. Uh, you see that uh, nature here in the background is full of fungal mass as well, so maybe we're just meeting our brethren. Um, and why that is... Oh, come on, why do I not grow further? Um, that's uh, extremely impressive scene with the great music in the background. So what we need to do here to finish the game off is... Come on. This. And time is coming up and... 
Time. There we go. What's my final time? Dude, this is a new world record! <laughs> Uh, I think by more than a minute even. <laughs> wow. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, Mushroom 11 everybody. Now you see the fungus is spreading its spores all across the, the dead planet. We're uh, bringing life upon it again. And so it's all the theme or robberous uh, destruction and rebirth only present in the game. It's an awesome game. It was one of the games uh, funded by the Indie Fund by um, Jonathan Blow. Um, uh, it's awesome, it's speedrun is really fun, it's hard to learn because of the weird physics and regrowth mechanics, but uh, it's absolutely rewarding and worth it. Um, I would really like to see you uh, give it a try. Shoutouts to, shout to developers Untamed Games, uh, Itai and Julia, they, they did an amazing job with the, with the game. Shoutouts to Power Up Audio, who did the sound design and, and music, um, uh, music deliberation for the game. Shoutouts to Future Sound of London, who have composed the music. And also shout out to the runners of the game, uh, DJ Carmichael and um, uh, Cracker Bean, who have, uh, whose runs I've used as a reference to learn this game. And um, yeah, that's uh, Mushroom 11, everybody. Thank you very much for watching. It was great fun. And have fun at ESA further. Well, thanks a lot, Zed.